Happy New Year, and welcome to Constantu TV's Close Up on Workplace Law, where we zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their attorneys, and to their human resources professionals. I'm your host, Lee Tyson, and I'm a partner in Constantu's Atlanta office. So what is in store for employers in 2018? Here to look into our crystal ball is Tim Newton, and Tim is one of my partners here in the Atlanta office. So welcome, Tim. We're so excited to have you in studio with us today. Thank you, Lee. It's good to be here. Well, great. Well, Tim, last year we actually talked to Jim Gott in our Denver office and had him make some predictions for 2017. And he predicted that the Trump administration would create a much more employer-friendly government than we've seen in the last eight or so years. Did that really pan out, do you think? Well, we're still waiting to see more definitive actions from the government, but mm. I, I think we're off to a good start. I don't think Jim led you astray or anything. <laughs> well, good. That is, that is quite a relief. Um, I don't know if I have to prompt you as to what the first main issue we face in 2018 is. I don't know. Could it rhyme with, like, I don't know, Schmexual schmarassment? <laughs> I think it may be something similar to that. I mean, uh, yeah, sexual harassment issues mm -hmm. and prevention, they're going to be huge in 2018. Sure. With the proliferation of the high profile cases with Harvey Weinstein and Matt mm -hmm. Lauer and Kevin Spacey and all the publicity that that entails, I think you can expect that that's going to be the foref on the forefront of, of many people's minds during 2018. I think it's going to be a big year for sexual harassment training and prevention. I think mm -hmm. companies are going to have to really go the extra mile to make sure that their policies are updated mm -hmm. and that they're giving really effective training programs. And I think employers should also be on the lookout for these bandwagon claims. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, employees being especially attuned to the issue of sexual harassment mm -hmm. and then asserting claims over some things that are very minor and you get some very frivolous claims. And there's going to be some claims that have merit too. So sure. I don't think you want to label them all as bogus, but there's going to be plenty of, of claims that you're going to have to sort through and employers are going to be ready for those in 2018. I think the cases that draw the most media attention and probably are the uh, most high profile are ones involving executives, mm -hmm. high level managers. And so I think it's going to be more important than ever before that employers train their high level executives mm -hmm. and even board members regarding how to handle these sexual harassment situations because an employer is going to be judged on how they responded. Uh, what other things do we need to be on the lookout for? Well, another area that's going to be, I think, key in 2018 is the intersection of LGBT rights and mm -hmm. re religious rights. And I think there's a Supreme Court case that there was an argument heard past, this past fall called the Masterpiece Cake mm -hmm. case. And basically that involved the baker that refused to bake a cake for a same-sex wedding. And that's not an employment case, but mm -hmm. I think how the Supreme Court rules on that issue could have a um, impact on employers and how they address LGBT rights in the workplace while balancing the um, religious rights of other employees. So we want to see how that turns out this year. That's hey, your that's, yeah. my, that's my jam. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, now that President Trump's aboard, there's a Republican majority mm -hmm. in the NLRB, and so now you're going to see a start, sort of reversal of some Obama-era era decisions that were not the most employer-friendly. Right. Um, you know, one of the issue, one of the big reversals that's already come about is the reversal on the joint employment doctrine. Mm -hmm. Under the Obama administration, the NLRB had a very... Um, ruling that was very negative toward employers. It made it very easy to tie employers together as joint employers. And mm -hmm. I think the new NLRB has changed that standard. Mm -hmm. I think they've also um, relaxed some of the scrutiny of workplace rules. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the Obama era board was construing rules very broadly and ruling them invalid. And I think this board's going to call that back a little bit. I think there's going to be some good rulings on micro bargaining units mm -hmm. and other things that I think are going to be much more employer friendly. So I think we can expect that. Right. I, I, the NLRB has already made it very clear. I mean, like as soon as the new general counsel was even appointed, he was out there with a, a multi-page long document explaining what his changing initiatives were going to be. And that also included the rescission of all of those previous memoranda that set forth things like the handbook right. rules. And they're not going to enforce specialty health care anymore. So micro-bargaining units are, are a thing of the past, mm -hmm. sort of, maybe. We'll see. But yeah, so that's a tremendously changing landscape over there. You had the Obama administration that issued a regulation that basically doubled the salary threshold for 
administrative, executive, and professional um, employees in order to maintain the exemption from overtime requirements of the Fair Labor Standards Act. And um, almost immediately when that regulation came aboard, there was they were challenged in court. The court um, issued an injunction blocking the order. The Obama administration appealed, but lo and behold, the pres- President Trump gets elected. The Trump administration continues the appeal for procedural reasons, but then just drops the whole thing. Right. So um, there's going to be no change currently to the salary threshold for administrative, executive, and professional employees, but I think there is going to be some activity in the future, and I think you can expect some changes to that going forward, not what the Obama administration wanted, but there will be some changes. Do you have any idea about what kind of new threshold we'll be yeah, talking about? Yeah, the word on the street is going to be about 33000 and, and okay. re- right now it's around 23000 mm-hmm. and the Obama administration wanted it to go up to 47000 mm-hmm. So the sweet spot, I think, is going to be 33000 but we'll have to stay tuned to that to see what they do. Um, I think with the new threshold, you're still going to have a number of jobs that are going to have to be reclassified. Okay, so, all right, rapid fire, what's next? Okay, employee wellness programs, I think, is on tap. Um, (laughs) During the Obama administration, the uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission issued some regulations regarding wellness programs that were actually very favorable to employees. Right. Um, And um, it really gave employers a lot of flexibility in in dealing with these programs in the workplace. But um, the AARP, interestingly enough, sued, Mm -hmm. claiming that the regulations did not go far enough to protect employees. Yeah. So um, that's, that that was an odd situation that Obama yeah, what was there the being? What was, yeah, there, well, was there a primary complaint there? Well the basic issue is that in in the situation of wellness programs, both the ADA and the Genetic Non Discrimination Act prohibit inquiries or medical related inquiries. Right. Um, and genetic information related inquiries. And unless it's part of a voluntary wellness program. Mm-hmm. The key word is voluntary there. So what happened was the Obama administration issued regulations that said you could have incentives to, you know, I don't want to say coerce, but that's what the ARP argument is, to incentivize employees to participate in these wellness programs. Mm-hmm. Make it more well, attractive. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, the ARP says the, in- the incentives are so great mm-hmm. that they're really penalties for not participating so the vo- the wellness programs are no longer quote voluntary, voluntary. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so that's the issue that was litigated and a federal district judge in district of Columbia actually ruled that the AFP was correct and they ordered the EEOC to revamp the regulations and then uh, after a period of time elapsed the EEOC was not moving fast enough that's mm-hmm. not a surprise <laughs> um, and the, the judge basically said look I'm going to invalidate those regulations in their entirety, but mm-hmm. I'm going to stay my order until, I believe, January of 2019. Mm-hmm. So the EEOC has the rest of this year to come up with new regulations that are going to satisfy this judge and, and the district. So this has been a whirlwind tour. So many things to expect. You I know, know. I know. It's going to be an interesting year. Big year. Yeah. So do you have any closing thoughts on 2018? No, I, I think that if, there are a lot of employer-friendly actions out there. There's mm-hmm. no question that employers are going to be uh, treated differently in, under this administration than under the Obama administration. But mm-hmm. I think employers need to still be cautious and mm-hmm. need to understand that there's still going to be some compliance issues they're going to have to deal with. And they, they don't need to rest too easy. Don't get too excited yet. All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been so helpful. I appreciate your time today. It's great to be here. And thank you so much for joining us. Hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.